Okay, we've learned two methods of solving systems of equations so far. That was graphing and substitution. And we learned that substitution actually lo works quite well in equations like these two here when we have a variable that does not have a coefficient. Or, in other words, it has a coefficient of 1, but we don't write it. Um, this works quite well because I can get this variable all by itself. However, if we try to use substitution in an equation such as these, this system of equations, when we try to get a variable all by itself to make that substitution in the other equation, what we're going to end up with is kind of a messy fraction. So substitution is not ideal unless you have a situation like this where you have one variable and it has no coefficient in front. So we have to come up with a different uh, different way to make things easier for us. So we'll just get rid of those. Before we do uh, our new method of solving equations, I want to illustrate a property of equality to you. Let's take a couple very simple uh, equations. Uh, 4 plus 2 equals 6. Hopefully you can see that that is in fact true. Okay, And it is an equation because we have an expression equal another expression. That's an equation. I'm going to give you another one. Negative 7 plus 3 equals negative 4. Again, true, um, but very simple. Let's call this equation 1 and call this equation 2. Uh, if I take equation 1 and I add equation 2, I'm just going to add everything down vertically. Um, let's see what we get. 4 plus negative 7. Uh, these four positives take out four of those negatives. I'm left with negative 3. 2 plus 3 is a positive 5. And 6 plus negative 4. These four negatives take out four of those positives. And I'm left with 2. And I hope you notice that negative 3 plus 5 is in fact true. So I get a third equation that, while it's different from the other two, it is still true. Equality has still been preserved. If I take my original two equations and subtract them, and be careful with your integers, 4 subtract negative 7 is like 4 plus 7, which is 11. 2 subtract 3 is negative 1. And on this side, 6 subtract negative 4 is really 6 plus 4. We have 6 subtract negative 4. Those two double negatives make a positive, so I get 10 on this side. And I hope you notice that this is also a fourth equation that, while completely different from the other ones, it is still true. So when I add two true equations, I still get another equation where equality has been preserved. Now that's going to be very useful when we go about solving by elimination. Now, here's a system of equations that we don't want to have to solve by substitution. Because if I wanted to get either the x or the y by themselves, I would end up with a messy fraction. But I want you to notice that here I have two x's that um, they have the same coefficient in both equations. And so if I simply subtract the equations, and as we saw a minute ago, that I will still preserve an equality, I will still get an equation that is true. If I subtract these two equations, this term is going to go away, because 2x subtract 2x is 0, and I'll just be left with y's. Now you have to be very careful with your integers, make sure you know how to do your integer uh, addition and subtraction. And I'm going to show you how to write this down uh, nicely and with correct math form. So we want to put a little bit of communication in here. Here we have equation 1, and we're going to subtract equation 2. And that's how I write it. When I have circles around my numbers, that means I'm referring to the equation that has those numbers. So if I take equation 1 and I subtract equation 2, 2x subtract 2x is gone. My x's have been eliminated, hence the, uh, the name of the method. So 5y subtract negative 7y. Uh, is going to be 5y plus 7y, which is going to give us 12y. 
and 13 subtract 1 is going to give us 12. So I have 12y equals 12, and now when I divide both sides by 12, y is in fact equal to 1. So I know that y equals 1 is half of the answer to this question, and see, that only really took two steps. Now, the next one is no shorter, the next half of this is no shorter um, than the substitution method was before. I have to take this y and sub it back into one of my first two equations to figure out what x is. So I'm going to say sub y equals 1 in, and I'm going to pick an equation that just looks nicest to me. Uh, I happen to like positive numbers because I tend to drop negatives and uh, do all kinds of weird things with negatives. So I'm going to sub it back into equation number one where all the numbers are positive. You might like numbers that are smaller. You might like your two or your five times tables better so it's easier to do the arithmetic in your head. It's really up to you which one you choose. So I'm going to sub y equals one back in. So I have two x plus 5 times y, but I know that y is 1, so I'm going to sub that in, equals 13. This is 2x plus 5 times 1 is just 5, equals 13. And now we're solving another equation with one variable. Uh, subtract 5 from both sides, and I have 2x equals 8. And divide both sides by 2, and I know that x equals 4. So there's the solution to my system of equations. Say therefore the solution is x comma y for one.